Pioneering companies like Stonyfield Farm seek to capture increasing amounts of Walmart shelf space for organics and responsibly produced consumer goods. Pioneering venture funds like Greenmont Capital provide venture capital to organic food companies. These important enterprises redirect capital away from destructive industrial activity and toward restorative economic activity. However, they do not influence directly the speed of money or redefine directly the role of investors in the evolution of capital markets. Despite the commercial success of a number of small, socially responsible companies such as Ben & Jerry's, Aveda, and Stonyfield, along with the dramatic growth of the organics and low-house markets as evidenced by Whole Foods' rapid approach at this, when I wrote this to the threshold of the Fortune 500, fundamental questions remained unanswered. Now we're getting into some of the actual strategy questions that we have to answer with slow money. Uh, the, uh, these are a bunch of questions. One, how is mission inexorably compromised when a company goes public or is acquired? Two, what happens to local when a company scales? Three, is there an alternative to Series A, Series B, Series C? How many people know what I'm talking about? A lot of you. These are just, these are, these are just private finance, stages of private financing, venture capital financing of a company. Is there an alternative to Series A, Series B, Series C, and IPO or sale, in public offering or sale to a multinational? To me, that question is, that's, that's you know, the old thing about insanity is doing the same thing over and over again, hoping for a different outcome. That's that question. It's like if we just keep using these same tools and then being sorry that the companies end up in the hands of you know, absentee shareholders, it's, it's, we're insane. I think we are clinically insane, actually. It's, we can discuss that later after, after the presentation is over. Can alternatives to, uh, next question, can the alternatives to the traditional corporate charter be designed, creating ownership and governance structures that embed a stakeholder accountability culture that cannot be diluted as a company grows? And then lastly, would the food system in particular and the economy as a whole be safer and healthier if tens of thousands of small, independent, mission-driven companies were supported by capital that prioritized local control? These interrelated questions go to the fundamental imperatives of an economic transformation that started with the Jeffersonian ideal of a small farmer and ends with Twinkies, TV dinners, nutraceuticals, and a bunch of eco-farmers who don't know whether they are a movement or an industry. Um, uh, how, how, many, how many farmers are there in the room? There are a few. Have you been to EcoFarm? Have you guys been, ever been to the EcoFarm thing up in Silmar? So you, but you know Joel Salat, and probably a lot of people here know, either know Joel or know who Joel Salat is, maybe from Michael Pollan's book, Omnivore Dharma. But Joel gave one of the most rabble-rousing keynotes I've ever heard at EcoFarm about five years ago. And he got on the stage after someone from Whole Foods had just spoken. Everyone was really confused and ambivalent about the whole Whole Foods thing. And Joel got up and said, don't let them ever confuse you. You are a movement. Well, he said we. He said we are a movement, not an industry. And this is a movement that started when, they, when the Spanish came to this, country, to this continent and tried to conquer it and take its riches back to the old world. And now we're, we're ending with corporations that are trying to patent life and steal life from indigenous cultures. And he said, you, you know, we um, organic farmers are the movement that is trying to protect life. But by the same token, if Gary Hirschberg was here, Stonyfield Farms CEO, anybody happen to know him? Just curious. A fantastic entrepreneur. Um, at the Noyes Foundation, I was an investor in Stonyfield. It was the home run of our portfolio. You know, I have nothing but respect for that company and that person. And his, if he was on the stage with Joel, he would say, I completely disagree. I hate the M word. We're not a movement. We're an industry. We have to use the power of industry to transform our landscape. We have one generation to get toxics out of the food chain. The only way we're going to do it is by using industry and using big box distribution and whatnot. So, there's a lot of, um, and I'm sure you've all debated pieces of this thing um, um, yourselves. So is it a movement or an industry? Investors who invest in organic food companies without addressing these fundamental questions are too much like organic gardeners who use organic fertilizers and organic pest control, but who know nothing of the joys of composting and the mysteries of soil health. The result is a system that produces organic food companies and puts organic food products on the shelves, but leaves the soil of the community less fertile, less full of life, and less capable of supporting future generations. All right, one more page. Such system design questions are difficult to address in the macro. We would do well, therefore, to trust a good measure of our future, if only a small portion of our portfolios, to the disaggregated, fertile, diverse, creative genius of entrepreneurs and farmers. Entrepreneurs and farmers are the poets of the economy. They are holders of ambiguity and risk. They cultivate interstitial spaces where demand and need and aspiration coexist in a mildly turbulent state of chaotic possibility. They continuously test the boundaries of quality and quantity as a poet tests the boundaries of denotation and connotation. 
Ideas in a business plan. Seeds in potting soil. Rhymes in search of new reasons. Some of which may have been on his mind when Greg Steltenpole, the founder of Odwalla, who's a member of the Slow Money Alliance, said during a recent conversation, we want to make entrepreneurs more like farmers, not make farmers more like entrepreneurs. I love that sentence. I mean, a lot of people like Gary Hirschberg would you know, be diametrically opposed to that. Such a statement may have sounded downright daffy a generation or two ago when mass production and shareholder capitalism were in their infancy. Today, however, we need to re-examine the conventions of entrepreneurship and entrepreneurial finance, taking care not to continue acting in ways that once made sense, but now seem awfully mechanical, awfully prosaic, for a world whose social fabric is fraying and whose biological integrity is under threat. The rules and objectives of the Industrial Revolution and, and Industrial Finance, which have made possible everything from space travel and Velcro to the Internet and Pizza Hut, cannot be extended forever in a straight line. One kind of corporation is not going to serve all the needs of an evolving planet. One kind of capital market is not going to be responsive to the needs of all communities and bioregions. One definition of profit is not going to be appropriate for all stages of economic maturity. In fact, we might say that the urge to simplify and its paradoxical cousins, befuddlement and monoculture, are culprits that have led modern economic man astray. We have cut everything up into tiny buy low, sell high pieces. We have sliced and diced risk into a zillion securitized fragments. We have traded baguettes for Twinkies. We have traded freshness for shelf life. All right, that's that. All right, let's take a breather for, uh, here. And before I go into the PowerPoint, now, um, let's see if I need to say, in, oh, here's a um, little exercise just before, just to take a little breather here and change pace. Um, I'm gonna, this is a quiz. Uh, it's uh, a two, two questions. First, I'm going to give you a framing statement, then I'm going to ask two questions. The framing statement is, a million seconds is 12 days. So just remember, a million seconds is 12 days. Question number one, how long is a billion seconds? Seconds. 120 days? That, that's, so I don't know what you did, but you, you're close. I mean, you're... you're any other guesses? 12 days is the answer. Oh, wait a minute. I, I'm sorry. I'm, uh, let, me, let me catch myself up. A million seconds is 12 days. A billion seconds is, let's do this again. I, I haven't caught up with my own exercise. A billion seconds is how long? Try it again. The answer is 32.8 years. Now, if you did it in days, you would do 12,000 days. Right, so tw you had, right, a billion is a thousand million. So you had 12 days, 12,000 days, which is 32.8 years. But that's not the punchline. Where we're going is how long is a trillion seconds? Someone's going to get it. Another three zeros. 32,800 years. So just wrap your mind around this for a second. A million seconds is 12 days, a billion is 32.8 years, but a trillion is 32,800 years. So why did I do that at this moment? Because it's just a way of getting us to meditate on how out of control the numbers are. 